number one, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to probably take Bill Wagner's uh, question from him, but he talked a lot on our last podcast about how many freshmen and sophomores and underclassmen are currently in the rotation playing substantive roles for the team. In your experience in the, as, a, as the coach, have you ever had a team with more youth and inexperience at this, at this stage of the season, either through attrition or injury uh, or just sheer need? And what makes, what makes this season unique other than uh, more upperclassmen leaving for the transfer portal? Well, you're right. I don't think we've ever had this many freshmen and sophomore playing at this time. Like you said, um, through attrition, we lost a lot of kids during the pandemic. You know, guys left the academy, guys didn't come from naps. Um, you know, we've had a, injuries probably more than we normally have. I was telling someone like in 2019, we played the same offensive linemen pretty much the whole season. And I think besides one game, we've had a different lineup every game this season. Um, you know, our two safeties played the whole 2019, you know, Kevin Brennan and Evan Falkman. You know, we, we've down some guys, down to some youth, some guys that are playing substantial minutes, uh, a lot of it by need, and they're doing good things. You know, a lot of growing pains, but doing some good things. Um, Tyler Fletcher is playing at line, Will Linebacker. We played Colin Ramos also at linebacker. They did it, both of them played well, you know, played a lot of minutes last week, and I thought they played really well. And one of our kickoff returns that we re, you know, we took back to the house that one game. I, mean, I think there were eight true freshmen on the field. Nine. Oh, nine. Sorry. Nine. Thanks, Strauss. Yep. You know what I mean? That's why I never uh, used to play pickup basketball, Strauss. If there's one thing, there would be guys when we used to play, they would like try to, it's seven, six, Strauss. No, it's not. It's nine, seven. And I would say, guys, don't argue with him. He does this for a living. So if he says that's the score, that's the score. <laughs> his post up game isn't very good, but his, his county, he, he's never wrong. But thanks, thanks, Strauss. And he calls a lot of fouls, too. Actually, I remember. He, I remember the elbows from the uh, pickup basketball games, coach. I mean, don't don't worry about that. That's for sure. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah, just, on that note, you, you you mentioned the linebackers and and Hodges leaving the program. What can you say? You know, Temple's obviously a team of disarray, and I'm jumping right into my follow up. I apologize, but you know, with with a Temple team that was in disarray, how proud were you of the defense, particularly with how sloppy the offense was? at times to hold that team to what they did to such, you know, an anemic offensive output with all of the attrition, with all the stuff going on with all the young players, how proud were you on, on Saturday? And did it keep you warm in the incredibly uh, cold conditions? Yeah. I mean, I was proud of our team. Like you said, we did some good things. Um, you know, it's, you know, anytime you can get a win, you know, we're definitely going to take it. But proud of the way our young guys played. Um, but we're also playing a sophomore quarterback. You know what I mean? I think that gets lost <laughs> in a lot of this stuff. You know what I mean? We're playing a, a sophomore quarterback. And so there was hurt early on in the season, you know, missed the Air Force game, didn't play. You know, I started in playing Air Force game. So there's, I've been proud of a lot of stuff. I mean, it's come out, you know, the Strasbourg sent it out. I mean, just 11 of our opponents. We're a bowl teams, the number one toughest schedule in the country. I mean, that, that's, that's crazy to me. The United States Naval Academy, we have the toughest schedule. I mean, that's an SEC team. We were head of SEC schools and just, um, you know, we've had toughest schedules before. And I would have been fine with the 30th or the 40th, even the 50th, but to have the toughest schedule and our guys played, we played four top 25 teams. You know, it's going to look like two top five teams. You know what I mean? And a lot of those games, we were in it. You know, a lot of those games, we had a chance to win. And so just proud overall, just our guys continue to battle. You know, our, to me, our record's not indicative of this team, but um, I'm proud of our guys just continue to keep fighting, John. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, what's the importance and the meaning of the game in Philadelphia against Temple coming into the two weeks of preparation for the Navy game to come off a game like that as the team now prepares for Army? Well, anytime you can win is good. 
You know, I mean, the wins are hard to come by. And so uh, to get a W is, is definitely awesome for us. We're grateful to get that win. Um, you know, leading in, like you said, the two weeks as we get ready for for Army. Um, there's definitely a lot of things that we can improve on, but just just happy, you know, just happy the way we played. Uh, again, there's a lot of things we can do better, but grateful that we were able to come out with a victory heading into the Army game. What's impressed you the most about Carlinos AC's play in the last few weeks as he's really uh, taken it up another notch? Just who he is as a person, Scott, he's just, he's always had that talent. Maybe he's played behind some guys, you know, good players, whether it's CJ Williams or Miles Fells and Chance, you know, years past or whoever guys that he's played behind, but he hasn't said anything, hasn't complained. He's been a great teammate. And, you know, for him to do what he's done, uh, just really happy for him. Couldn't couldn't happen for to a better kid. Great young man from, from Pittsburgh, and just happy for for Carlinos. And we need him to have another good game, you know, to finish the season. And for his teammate and, and classmate too, Chance Warren, doing it all, both in the backfield, catching passes, catching passes for touchdowns, and also really adding another dimension on your punt return now. Chance had a really good game. And again, same thing that I told with Carlinos, he's going to be able, he's going to have to make that same thing uh, in two weeks. But Chance did some good things, you know, made some big time plays and on offense, also in special teams. And he's on a lot of special teams, you know, kickoff, punt. Uh, obviously, he's our punt returner. But just really, really proud of all the things that, you know, Chance done for our football team in his entire time here at the Naval Academy. You mentioned Ty's development at quarterback as a sophomore, really throwing the ball downfield, showing a lot in that game against Temple that I would imagine would uh, have to game plan if you're playing against Navy now, showing that you can get guys open downfield and in places where they get, get yardage. Well, yes, we have to be able to throw the football. I mean, we're an option team first and foremost. Uh, but, you know, we have to be able to throw the football, protect, you know, run our routes and, you know, complete passes. But was, you know, we had a chance to make a couple more plays in the passing game, but probably the ones that we made. Throw that um, Xavier had was a big time throw in the first touchdown. That was, you know, perfect throw. You know, then, the, you know, Ty made some big time throws over the middle and late in the game too. Thanks a lot, coach. Thanks, Scott. Bill Bergman. Coach, um, with this bye week coming up, just what are some of the goals for the team? Just try to get rested and uh, recovered. Anything else you want to work on? Get ready for that game. You know what I mean? Just get ready for the game in two weeks. You know, so, um, you know, we're, we have to look at our team, kind of go through our injury report, kind of see where we're at. Obviously, as you said, Phil, we got to try to recover, but we also got to be able to use this week. You know, we didn't have it last week, uh, last year. You know, we didn't have the, the extra week preparation. In this game, but this week we will, this year we will. So we definitely got to be smart on it, find a way to get some recovery time, but also try to get our game plan in, start to prepare, you know, for the Black Knights. Looking back at a past season since about 2014, there's a strong correlation with winning the game before Army and then beating the Black Knights. What's so important about getting this win, getting this momentum heading into that game? Uh, I don't know. I've never looked at it that way. I mean, I've never looked at the game before the game. You know what I mean? I, I don't look at it. I just look at that game. So I, I don't know. You know what I mean? So I, I couldn't answer that question. Phil. I mean, I, I never broke it down that way. I mean, we've always just looked at um, one of the games in 2016. I mean, we're coming out of the championship game, you know, playing uh, Temple and well, you just you just try to get pre -ready, ready for that game. You know, last year we had one week. Uh, two years ago, we had two weeks to prepare. Uh, and, you know, all the games have been close. So, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't answer that question. I've never even looked at that. Got it. And then uh, just lastly for me, how pleased have you been with the quarterbacks uh, slinging the ball uh, over the last game? Better. Feel better. You know, still got to improve on our protection. Um, still got to get better in our reads. But, uh, I thought they made some better things, Phil, but, you know, obviously we got to continue to prove on that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bill Wagner, Annapolis Capital, Baltimore Sun. Yes, thank you, Strauss. Um, Coach, you were talking about Carlinos. What do you think is uh, 
enabled him to take it to another level. He is just running so well. You know, Chance said it in the postgame preference conference. It says, whenever Carlinos gets the ball, I look up at the big board because I'm thinking he's going to score because he's, he's, he's hard to bring down with one guy. He seems to be able to make a guy miss or shake a tackle. Anything in particular that you're seeing out of Carlinos and has enabled him to really turn it up a notch? I think he's, at, you know, got more opportunities. You know, we've had some good A-backs in the past that, you know, the room's been kind of filled. But I think just opportunities, touches. Um, you know, he's been a good blocker over the years for us. Um, you know, but, you know, Carlinos goes where we need him to go. Um, he hasn't complained if he's on the, if he's the blocker, you know what I mean? But he's a really good runner, but probably more than anything, Bill is just his probably more touches. That's probably what's helped him. He's, he's always had the speed, you know, yeah, I think he had the, he's a city to school, 60 meter, you know, record at his high school. And so we always knew the kid could run. Yeah. He showed that speed on the, uh, long touchdown run the other week. Um, yes, you, yep. You you had mentioned about the offensive line. Do you feel you'll be fully intact as far as uh, the Army game? I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Mertesi, see, I get he sat out against Temple, right? Yeah, so it doesn't look good. You know, that's probably a long shot for Mertesi. What about uh, Pena? For, uh, Pena, we're hope, very hopeful for, you know, that he'll be back. Uh, so those are guys probably – uh, doubtful too for Masani I to to questionable you know what I mean that's a long shot too just been one of those years man it's been crazy you know what I mean just you know we just um guys got banged up I mean it's everybody has I mean everybody playing college football has gotten hurt but like I said we played 19 it's kind of crazy that we played 19 with the same starter line the whole season <laughs> we had so many lineups this year but just keep, keep nobody nobody cares or Nobody's crying for us. You got to keep pressing forward. Yeah, Strauss said that the uh, on Saturday against Temple was your eleventh different offensive line combination. Right. Have you nine, ever... nine, nine out of eleven. Oh, nine. Okay. Yeah, I'm nine sorry. out of eleven. Yeah. Which is hard because on offensive line, if there's any place you're trying to get some continuity, is there? You know what I mean? In line, so. But I've been pleased with them. You know, they continue to keep working. Some young guys are getting some reps. Bryce Deshera has been moving all over the place. And, you know, to the kids' credit, Kip Franklin has been, you know, he's been probably playing the best, most consistent of the five. Been happy with him. Um, you know, Pierce has moved back to center from guard. And Nick Bernhockey came in last week and did a good job. And then Jamie Romo played left tackle, you know, his first start, college start. So that's great to see a local kid get in there and, you know, get his first start. And he did, he did some good things. Ty did miss some throws in the first half. Um, you know, there were some guys that were open. Did he mention was the wind? It was an 18-mile-an-hour wind. Did the wind affect his throws? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it had a factor in it. You know what I mean? Just um, the wind was swirling down there. Um, you know, we got to find a way to make those, though. You know what I mean? And, you know, the kid, you know, the kid's hard on himself. You know, we hold him to a high standard, especially you're playing quarterback. I mean, we're going to hold you to a high standard. But he had a chance to get some other ones, which he missed early on, and but he bounced back. And regarding Ty, I mean, it's, if he uh, starts against Army, uh, which I think he would, um, it'd be his first time playing in that environment. Or do you feel he's got enough reps under his belt? to? Because it was interesting to hear Tyler Fletcher after the game on Saturday uh, – Reporter asked about Army Navy, and he said, "You know, I've never played the game. I've, I'm told it's a tough game. That's you know, a lot for a freshman. Um, you're going to have a lot of guys playing their first Army Navy game, including your quarterback." Yeah, it's tough for seniors. You know, we had Keenan. Remember playing his senior year in you know, one of our better teams, and he talked about how nervous he was. This Army Navy game, obviously, you like guys with experience. It's hard to prepare for that game. Uh, the magnitude of it, you can't replicate it. You do the best you can, some of your your preparation, you know, but it's hard. Uh, but even when guys have games under their belt, wags, it's you want to win the game so bad that it's it's a tough game, but you're exactly right. We're gonna have a lot of new faces in there, and we gotta do the best job we can as a staff to get them ready for it. 
It's been a while since you played at MetLife Stadium. I'm going to say Strauss was that Notre Dame game the last yeah. time maybe you played there? You're correct. Right. And that's that's been a while. Um, anything, 2010. 2010. Yep. Anything that changes, Coach, um, as far as, you know, how you deal? I mean, you're so used to Philly and that, you know, that routine, your hotel's always the same, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, have, you'd have you all, you know, anything special about MetLife that you got to do? Well, I hope what happened last time we were there happens again. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's probably the the best we ever got. I mean, we got after Notre Dame. I mean, that wasn't a last second field goal or, you know, kicking a game winner as time expires or anything. I mean, we got after them pretty good. And um, so hopefully there, maybe there's some, hopefully there's some carryover. I'm thinking when I was here before we went there in 97, right, Strauss? But in between that time, when's the last time we were there? Uh, 2002, the Candido game, 50, uh, 58 okay. to 12. So, the, you know, so they've been good games over there, 97, 97. 2000, yep. 2002. And, you know, we were there last time, 2010. So hopefully, hopefully there'll be some good juju from those games. We need some good juju. What's funny, I'm, the podcast I do with Eric Catani and Keenan Reynolds, we're having Ricky Dobbs as alumni spotlight. I'll ask him about that Notre Dame game because he was one of the guys running wild along with Alexander Teets, remember? Teets yeah, makes and, an unbelievable catch and run. Uh, and, and Brian Kelly said that Navy ran the veer. <laughs> <laughs> those guys uh, those guys you just mentioned, they had a, they had some good games against West Point. Yep, you know I mean? yep. Just Ricky and Keenan and Eric Catani and – Maybe you can get, like you said, get some good juju from them. We're going to need it. All right, I'll pass it off. Uh, Chris Adams. Yeah. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, just have a, a question here about the Army game coming up. But, uh, you know, considering your schedule and coming off the victory last weekend, looking at Army schedule, what kind of game are you expecting next week? Uh, the same. It's going to be a slugfest. Like <laughs> I mean, I, I've been in I've been in this game, you know, I've been in this game a lot, you know, what I mean, 24 times or I guess this will be my 24th time. And you just throw out everything before the games. I mean, don't look at the records. I mean, if you went after, you know, like um, last year going into the game, you know, we beat Tulane and they lost to Tulane. But then we lost, you know, what I mean, there have been yeah. vice versa. So sometimes look at the guys, look at prior schedules and. um you know, probably one of our best teams in 2015, uh, our team with Keenan Reynolds. I mean, we're knocking down a pass as game expires to, to beat uh, West Point. You know what I mean? And so it, it's going to be a slugfest. I mean, uh, the thing that I've learned in this game, anything prior to the game doesn't mean anything. Only thing that matters is on that game day. That's the only thing that I've learned, you know, just it's who plays best that game you know what i mean that's that's where everything lies in yeah yeah that's all i have thanks coach i appreciate it hi chris uh paris molden hi coach i'm paris molden with wounded warrior project um i know you've probably been asked this a million times but for our supporters and readers um what is that you mentioned the magnitude of this game can you just briefly kind of say what is the magnitude of this game um to veterans to the military well i think it's a game that you know captures the entire country you know just from a standpoint of i think all of us everybody knows somebody that served in the army or the Navy or Marine Corps, you know, whether it's family members or relatives or friends. So it's not a regional rivalry. It's a, it's a rivalry that touches all of America. That's why many people say it's America's game. You got two schools that are, you know, that are the United States Naval Academy and the United States Military Academy. That It's not a state. This is our, our, our countries. These are institutions for our country. Um, majority of guys won't go to the league. Uh, there will be some fortunate that will be able to go in the league, but for many of them, this will be the end. But all of them will be serving our country to protect our freedoms. And so that's how I've always looked at it. Just the American, I love college football. I love pro football. I love football in general. But because of the things that guys on this field would do, the veterans that you talked about that have served our country, um, 
we're able to have this. You know, our, our country is able to have play American football that, you know, because of the freedoms that come from people that serve in the military. So that's why this game is different. And it, you know, it represents our country. We're grateful for all that serve, our veterans, and all of us that give the freedoms in our country. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Uh, let's go to uh, John Kikas, Associated Press in New York. Hey, Coach. Uh, uh, doing a feature on Andre Carter. What kind of uh, problems does he present for you guys? Ooh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a uh, yeah, it's a good player. You know, presents a lot of problems. Um, you know, their team. I mean, they're a really good football team. So we're starting to watch tape today and starting to break down stuff and just uh, really impressed. But you know, obviously he's a really good football player, but there's a lot of guys on the team that you know I've been impressed with as we as we're starting our, our preparation to get ready for the Black Knights and watching them. They're a really good football team, well coached. Thanks, coach. Thank you. All right, we got nine minutes. So I'll make another trip around. Uh, go uh, John Schofield again. Hey, Coach, first of all, you know, this will be different for Ty and a lot of the players in that it will be in front of fans, which, you know, obviously took place last year in Mikey, which is a more intimate atmosphere. But, you know, watching the tape from Temple, it almost looked like a COVID game from last year in that, you know, the link is always very sparsely attended for Temple games. In fact, I saw a video on the Navy football Twitter page with the team finishing blue and gold. And it honestly looked like not a single human being was in the stadium. How tough is it to play in that environment when there are no fans? Did it kind of give you some PTSD back to last year? Yeah, I never thought of that. Cause I, I thought we got off to a sluggish start. Great question, John. And we talked about getting off to a fast start, which I didn't think we did. Uh, but it's, you know, you come from playing at East Carolina. Before that, we were at Notre Dame where it's, we couldn't hear each other. We had to burn three timeouts in our first first quarter because we were trying to, you know, we couldn't communicate. Uh, then our, our home game against ECU was such a close game that it was loud and raucous the whole game. But then, like you said, it wasn't not as many fans at Lincoln Financial last, last week. But, and we have to prepare for a huge crowd, excuse me, you know, two weeks and, we just got to adjust, you know, they have to adjust too. And we got to find a way to adjust. And lastly, from me, how proud are you? I, I sort of touched on it before with the number of freshmen playing on special teams, but not only has it been marked by youth, but it's been marked by performance. Um, I think, you know, we've been talking on our podcast about how special teams was a little bit of a bugaboo for the program leading up to the last couple of weeks. And now it seems like the plays on special teams are benefiting us, vice hurting us. What's been the secret sauce there, or am I just misinterpreting it? No, great, great analysis on that, John. We have definitely improved in special teams. There's a big emphasis for us because we feel like it hurt us in some games. I mean, not I feel like it, it hurt us in games that we, we had a chance to win. I mean, we, we were up on Houston, then, you know, they returned one to the house. We're up on SMU, they returned one to the house. You know, we're up 21 to seven on, on SMU, 17 to seven on Houston. Um, you know, the Air Force game, you know, we had some snafus in there. We're running into kicker, we dropped a punt. You know I mean? Just there are things that happened that were hurting us early and we've, we've spent a lot of time on it. Our coaches have done a great job. The players have done a great job. You know, uh, Coach Coniglio has done a good job. Coach Yokaitis, Coach O'Rourke. Those guys have done a really good job in trying to improve on that. But to have Mikael, you know, done a really good job in, you know, returning that kickoff, you know, I, I taking that one back to the house. Riley, our punter, the true freshman. Ethan's a freshman snapper. Those guys have come on and do some good things. And so we're getting a lot of young guys in too, whether it's, we already talked about Fletcher and Ramos, uh, but also Kyle Jacobs, another guy that's gotten in there. Um, Marcus Blazard. It's another guy that, you know, just uh, Amin Hassan, uh, Vincent Terrell. I'm just running off the top of my head. But, there's, but we got quite a few guys. I'm sure I'm missing some guys, some freshmen. But it's been good, like you said, John, because we're playing much better, you know, on special teams. And, you know, hopefully that trend continues. Thanks, Coach. 
Interesting uh, note on that. According to PFF, uh, Pro Football Focus, the Houston kick returner is the second best kick returner in the country. The SMU kick returner is the sixth best uh, kickoff returner in the country. Mikel Haywood is the fifth best kickoff returner in the country. And the kid from South Florida is first. So four of the top six are in the AAC. Scott Wyckoff. I'm good, thanks. Phil Burton. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Coach, um, a few quickly. Uh, you, you coach in a lot of Army-Navy games, but this year I will be down with you. What's that moment going to be like for you? Well, it's been awesome. I mean, he was there last year too, Phil, but it was different because it's – I mean, he didn't – you know, wasn't coaching last year, but mm -hmm. also it, it's – we were at West Point and there was still a different – little different, different atmosphere. Still an Army-Navy game, but my son's actually been on many sidelines, you know, <laughs> from a little – from a uh, – when he was young – and I mean, they've grown up on the sidelines. All of my family, they've grown up on the sidelines. So where they're there, they're just standing next to Strassmeyer with their sideline pass as a, you know, as a youth to, you know, being now where he's a coach. It's, it's been pretty cool. You know, I've enjoyed having him, um, you know, coach. But, you know, here at, 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 you know, at work and stuff, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a worker. You know, what I mean, so I'm gonna yell at him the same way. Um, you know, as you just, you know, to do your job. But you know, I think eventually, at the end of it, at times, you know, I do reflect on you know, man, I'm standing next to my son. But it, sometimes I don't think about it too much because he's been on the sideline field for so many of those games. You know, as you know that I've been here, so I'm just kind of used to you know my son's, you know, being on the sideline. Cool. Uh, we're running well on time, so I'll pass to someone else. Wags, uh, you got the last, last yeah, couple. It'll be real quick. I mean, coach, if you beat Army, you finish with four wins. Do you think, considering the schedule being as tough as it is, toughest ever in the history of Navy football, knowing that um, you could have won two or three more, uh, do you think that would be a positive? Definitely. I mean, winning Army is going to be huge going to the offseason. I mean, uh, to me, it catapults us. We got a ton of guys coming back. We got a great recruiting class coming. Hopefully our schedule won't be number one next year in the toughest, you know, I mean, hopefully we'll get back into the seventies or the eighties or somewhere, but not number one. Um, but I, 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 I definitely think it bodes well for us, Wags, you know what I mean? Beating them, uh, heading into the off season, knowing that you get a ton of guys coming back. Um, I, I think it will be great to catapult us, you know, into the 2000 and, you know, 22 season. Because like I said, it, the schedule will still be tough, but I don't think it's going to be number one. You know I mean? It's just, and I remember, I mean, I don't know if you got it. Um, uh, I'm sure you got it recorded. Why? I mean, Strauss, but I remember saying at the beginning of the year that this is the toughest schedule that I can ever remember in all of my years of being here. But even with that said, I had no idea it would be number one. <laughs> when I saw that, I'm like, whoa, number one? Did it? Uh, but, oh, well. But that's that's over with right now. I find a way to get the Black Knights, and that's where all of our focus is right now. Well, Carlinos, you've been running really well here over the last half of this season. Um, anything in particular that has clicked for you that has enabled you to have play the best football of your career? Um, I think it's just the the whole offense operating better because it, it takes uh, eleven people to get the job done. So. Uh, quarterback making the right checks, the right reads, uh, the line blocking well, and then the, the eight backs and receivers blocking for each other well, too. So I think that's how I played a, a big part in it. Chance Warren was saying that he gets excited whenever you touch the ball because he thinks at any time you might take it to the house. Uh, is it kind of cool to have your fellow slot back and classmate, uh, you know, heaping praise on you? Oh, yeah, that, that's awesome. I feel the same way about him. Every time a ball's in the air, I see see the ball hit his hands. You know, I, I just feel like a big play can happen at any moment. So, you know, it's, you know, it's just cool to to have that that trust in each other. Well, I mean, Coach Diamat just said it on his presser. We're going to need Carlinos and Chance to make some more plays next Saturday in the big game. Um, you know, the A's make plays. How important is it for you and Chance? to do, do some things against Army? Uh, very important. Um, not just us, but, you know, us as a, as a whole A-back room, 
uh, whether that player is making a big block, a big catch, a big run. Uh, we want to win that, win the game. We're gonna have to make some plays. Last for me, um, you know, in, in terms of one other thing, Chance said is that it's hard. You don't, not one guy is going to bring you down, and it does seem as though you've done a remarkable job of making guys miss or you know shedding a tackle, at least one tackle. You're you know, you're not going down on first contact. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, ever since I started playing football, you know, uh, Little League, my coach would always tell me, you know, never let one person bring you down. And I've just been hearing that my entire career. Even I got here, uh, Coach Dupay, the A-backs coach, always tells us, you know, got to make that first guy miss. So I'm not something that the, the coaches put emphasis, emphasis on and, no, I'm trying to just continue to you know, keep making that first guy miss. What's the intensity and in practice like in these days leading up to the Army Navy game as you guys take it up another notch? Um, you, you just know, you know, it's a big game coming up. Um, obviously, we practice hard all, all season, but you know, when it's Army Week, there's just like another, just another feeling in the area. So it's, it's like everybody has to take it to another level. So. I mean, it'll be fun to get out there and get ready for them. Also, on the yard, while you're going between classes and doing your stuff away from the field, do you really feel a sense of difference in, in the the whole academy rallying the, the days leading up to the Army game? Uh, yeah, especially since you have the, the whole Army week stuff that the, the plebes get involved with. But, you know, I try to just not pay too much attention to that and, you know, just try to focus on the football aspect of it. What's been your biggest takeaway in your three years previous to this, watching your teammates that have played and, and talking to your teammates who have played in this game? What's your biggest takeaway from them? Um, just how everybody leaves it out on the field this game. Um, like I said, it, it's something you want to do every game, leave it all out on the field. But you know, when you're playing against them, it just means a little more. So uh, just having that intensity in practice because uh, the preparation is you know the most important part. So. Uh, coming to practice like it's a game every single day, letting that translate onto the field on game day. Along the lines of what Scott Wyckoff was asking you, you know, I, I know that some of the Army Week stuff was blunted last year with COVID. You know, something else that's taken a lot of a life of its own is the uniform drop. Uh, Army's drop today and Navy's drops tomorrow. You know, what, what is the, I mean, I, I know that the right answer is, hey, we just want to beat Army. We don't care what uniform we're, we're, we're wearing. But what is the, like, the unique uniform for every Army game? What has that meant to you over the four years? Uh, it just shows me, like, the, the tradition that I'm a part of, being a, a part of this historical Army-Navy game. Um, you know, it means a lot. It's a blessing, and it's not something I'll take for granted. And I think, you know, just the uniform drops, all of that, that's just a sign of that that special tradition that we have for, for this game. And last one for me as a follow-up, I, I have to commend you. You're one of, I believe, nine, uh, well, Scott will correct me, seven or nine surface warfare officers from your class of firsties. Um, walk me through that. Are you excited? What kind of ship are you looking forward to? And, and again, I've got to applaud you for uh, service assigning or service selecting the best warfare community in the Navy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I'm kind of undecided on exactly what, what type of ship. I know I've been thinking of amphibs, but um, like I said, I do more research uh, down the line. And for uh, February, for a ship, ship selection night, I think I'll, I have a better idea of what I want to do now. But I'm just trying to keep my options open. Coach was talking to us just about uh, how tough it is uh, mentally to prepare for this game uh, with such young guys on the team this year. What's your advice to them mentally to get ready for this big game? Uh, just letting them know that, yeah, it's, you know, it's a big game, a uh, big rivalry game, but at the end of the day, it's football. We're going to step on that field. It's going to be the same size field that we always played on, and we're just going to have to go out there and execute, execute our players. So I'm just letting them know that at the end of the day, it's, it's still football. For you personally, how do you not let the emotions of this big game not get you? Uh, exactly what I just said. Just remembering that it's football. Um, and I guess years down the line, I'll be able to, to look back and and look at all of the, the festivities that come along with it and, and enjoy that. But you know, right now, in my last year, I'm 
I'm just focused on the, the football part of it. So just realizing that it's it's a football game and, you know, we just got to go out there and execute. Well, Carlino, so you have a chance to finish here with two wins in a row. Uh, considering the tough schedule, the fact the team is so young across the board, um, do you think, you know, finishing with four victories, knowing you could have easily had seven, there was at least three games that were right, right there to be had. Uh, do you feel that would be a positive going into the all season for the, for the returning players? Uh, yeah. Ending on a, a winning note is always a positive. So, um, you know, just showing them that we, no matter what the record is, we just finish strong and fight every single game. I think that'll uh, go a long way for the, the younger guys who will be, be able to have a chance to play next year. A lot has been said about how tough Navy's schedule was this year. It's the number one most difficult schedule in um, in college football, you, you've played some incredible teams with incredible athletes. You might end the season having played two teams that are in the college football playoff, evaluating the entirety of your senior year, finally getting to play in front of fans. What, what team, what experience, what athlete on the other side of the ball will you remember the most in terms of you know, the, remembering what it's like to be a college football player before you go off and become a uh, surface warfare officer. Well, something cool, actually, last week, uh, I got to play against one of my, somebody I grew up with, played high school football with, played Little League football with, he played for Temple, his name was Layton Jordan, so um, I think that's something I'll be able to, you know, to remember forever, because uh, just growing up together and having that chance to, to go out there and play against them, uh, that was definitely a cool moment for me.